in those days, Harvard, like many other law schools, many other universities, had a policy of making people emeritus at a certain age. And at Harvard, you could stay on maximum to the age of 70. And then you could no longer teach. Congress had passed a law, by the way, making this illegal, but the universities got an exception for seven years. And I was in that seven-year period. Uh, and uh, so I was going to be made emeritus. And I didn't want to be emeritus. I wanted to keep teaching. And I knew Frank Alexander well. He had been my student. And he had invited me to Emory, by the way, to give a lecture once. And I'd been down here. So I got in touch with him. And he got in touch with President Laney. And they made me an offer of this Woodruff chair, which was very, very good offer. Jim Laney offered me an appointment for a lifetime. In fact, I had a letter from the dean of uh, so long as your energy, interest, and productivity continue. I remember asking the dean of the Harvard Law School when I was an assistant professor whether we shouldn't have a course in law and Christianity because I said to him, Christianity had such an important influence on the development of the history of law in the West. And he looked at me and he said, he was a wonderful man, but he didn't like this idea. He said, well, it might be a, it might be a extracurricular seminar, not for credit. <laughs> I want to tell you, in those days, religion was a sort of taboo subject in the law schools. It was just of no interest. In st indeed, today, it's not of major interest in most law schools. There are a few, like Emory, which recognize its importance. But every legal system rests on a belief system. And uh, what is what's been called civil religions. We believe in what? We believe in democracy or freedom with the same passion that in uh, religious circles, people believe in God. Uh, we believe in America. We, I love America, you know. We, our heart, religion is what is, comes from the heart, for, as well as the mind. It's the belief system. It's what you're committed to, what you're willing to fight for, even to die for. So we have deep in our tradition and deep in our constitutional law this concept of belief underlying legal rules. But most of the courses teach legal rules, uh, which and they're viewed from a political, from a policy orientation. What does the legislature want to accomplish by this rule? And not where did this rule come from uh, historically and morally? My own interest now is above all in the coming together of the different cultures of the world. For the first time in the history of the human race, we're all, the entire population of the world is beginning to interact with its, one with another all over into a kind of a world, emerging world society. We have a world economy. Uh, we are developing a world society with a world law. And as we're concerned with that, we have to look at the different belief systems which underlie these various cultures. Perhaps instead of talking about religions, we should talk about spiritual values and common spiritual values and different spiritual values, differences and similarities. Two defects which I attribute to American legal education, the lack of a historical perspective and the lack of a, let's call it a universal or a comparative perspective are very detrimental uh, in preparation, preparing people for practice. If you go into a law firm today, in the first place, you have clients in all countries. And the, I mean, it's amazing the extent to which multinational legal practice. And the law firms have to train the law school graduates in multinational legal practice because they don't get in the law school. You're a better lawyer if you have a historical perspective. I think. All the all the legal practitioners would agree. It's just the law schools that don't recognize the law professors who are each in his own way propounding the, his own uh, legal perspective, uh, which is not historical. My perspective is that we are undergoing a fundamental millennial change. We're changing from the I like to say from the second millennium 
of the Christian era to the third. And we're now in a new thousand year period or a hundred century period uh, of history where everything, now the world is a new world. In, in my lifetime, it all happened. I can't believe it. When I grew up, you know, we looked at England when we studied law. Well, I went pretty far, started studying French and German law. Then I suddenly had to realize there's also Russia, you know, and I had to become a Russian specialist. And then China, I've just been invited to China. I mean, it's been an enormous transformation in my lifetime. We had two world wars. Uh, we're all in touch with each other with these computers and these emails and these air travel and so forth. It's, this has all happened in my lifetime. Uh, and I think it's helpful to youth to tell them that. Uh, I think they need to hear it because they grew up not knowing anything about the past. In my experience, I'm amazed uh, at, how, at, the, at the consequences of a lack of a historical perspective. But legal education could help to bring the world together through the world economy, through world sports, through human rights, through all of it, through intellectual property, which is becoming more and more universal. We're told that there once were only 20,000 people in the whole world, in Africa mostly. They've spread little by little. They've traveled over thousands and thousands and thousands of years, and they filled the whole earth, and now we're all in touch with each other everywhere. And I think this is providential, and I think we have to find now common spiritual values to hold us together, or we may destroy each other with our nuclear weapons. And I think we've got to go back to human nature, the common features, common spiritual values, if we're going to give a legal foundation to this new world society, economy and this new world society that's emerging, uh, which should someday will become a world, I hope, a world community. But it's going to take generations and centuries before this world, emerging world society, develops finally into a world community. And we have to avoid, above all, uh, the dangers to this, to, to which are the destruction of, of the human race, which is a possibility. Uh, this is we're up, we're faced with this incredible choice between self-destruction of the human race and the coming together of all these cultures. Uh, and law can play a particularly vital role, and that's my world law. I was not quote the father. Uh, unquote, I'm the father of four children, but I'm not the father of any discipline.